We're built for struggle, us human beings. We're built to contend with the world. We're built to contend with reality. You want a challenge, and the best way that you can take on a challenge, because a challenge fortifies you. So you don't want to be secure, you want to be strong. And you get strong by taking on optimal challenges. Life is bounded by mortality, but that doesn't mean that you don't get out there and contend, and you develop by contending, and you minimize the net amount of suffering in the world. And that's something, man, that's something to do. They have a negative attitude where they, th they think that, well, if I don't do anything, if I just be a slacker, at least I won't fail and I can kind of make I feel myself feel better that I'm the best slacker that there is. You know, if you don't try too hard, you're never going to fail. You're never going to have the pain of failure. So that's the negative side of insecurity. But it can also motivate you to try even harder, to actually get work done and to make it something really great and to doubt yourself constantly. The future, we don't know. The past, it's gone. Now the only thing you can deal with is what's right here, right now. And if you look, the sand is always moving. Point is this, this is all we've got right here, right now. We don't know how much we have left in the future, but we do know what we've got now. And I have found the people that win are the people who make up their mind, they're not gonna waste the minutes. They're gonna be productive, they're gonna make it happen every minute. No matter how far you get in life, you have to be able to go back to scratch in your mind at a moment's notice. You can never get so far beyond scratch. What that means is, when you accomplish something in life, if you're going to go back to scratch and visit that place for a long period of time, if you were here, when you went back to scratch, you would now be here. Scratch is what makes you better. Scratch, friction, obstacles create growth. There's no friction when you're this far up in the game anymore. So your comforts are now, so your discomfort is now very minuscule to your discomfort back here. So you have to go back to the total discomfort to then raise your level of where you're at now. I think in the end, it, it's uh, persistence is more important than anything else. And having a, a desire to do something, you want to prove something. So you have a vision of where you want to go, willing to persist and overcome that's probably the key thing you have to have a vision of where you want to go you have to persist in it you have to be willing to overcome failures and not be afraid of making a mistake when you're down and out the first thing people do is blame it on everybody else but yeah. themselves when you start taking responsibility you have a little different outlook The more radical the necessary change, the more pain that accompanies it. Like the more opportunity as well. But, and a lot of what we learn, we learn painfully. And so it's not surprising that people shrink away from learning. We learn in pain and anxiety very frequently. Everyone knows that. It's like the things that really, that you really learned in life. It's like, there was no joy, man. Like it took you out. And so the fact that people flee from that is hardly surprising. But it doesn't help, that's the thing. It just stores up the catastrophe for later. The better idea is to eat a little poison every day so that you don't have to overdose in a month. You tend not to learn unless you're forced to learn. And, it's, and what you tend to learn by force are difficult lessons. And so people are very prone to, to not seek that out. It's not surprising but it's because they don't understand the consequences very well. Any way of forestalling it. All you do is make it worse in the future. You make yourself smaller and you make the lesson harder. But you have to have a very tragic, I would say, view of reality and also a harsh one because it's not just tragedy, it's also malevolence. You have to understand that those are waiting for you and that makes you desperate enough to learn. And that might be make you desperate enough to fall out of your ideology. But that's, that's a hard way of looking at the world. It beats living through it though.
You just have to know the first step to take. And when you take that step, you're going to find that your conditions, your circumstance and environment will change. Then you see how you have to make the next step. It's a matter of adapting all the time. You only have to know two things. You have to know where you're going and you have to know that you're going to get there. You've got to see it in your mind. Now, this is the beautiful scenario. This is what it's all about. Save that in your mind and think of it often. Think, every time you think of your goal and you're trying to figure out how you're going to do it, think of that vertical wall of ice. What's the next step? That's all you really have to know. One step at a time and you'll get to wherever you're going. You get to choose your life. You get to choose how you feel, not other people. There's these illusions in life. We really can't control anything other than our own thoughts, our own behavior, our own patterns. We can't control what other people do, say, or think. It's an opportunity, and the opportunity is, on many levels, to rethink your life, to rethink your values, to rethink where you're going, to rethink what your career should be, what your relationship to other people should be. It's a way, it's a time to re reorient yourself to who you are and what you like and what you, you know, what your goals are and what makes you unique. If you take that attitude, then the obstacle is the way. If you have that attitude where obstacles are actually the path forward, nothing's going to stop you. But it's all how you look at things. It's kind of a mental process that you switch to seeing the, the positive side. The truth of the matter is, is that you have a lot of potential as a child, but none of that is capable of manifesting itself as freedom before you become disciplined. And discipline is a matter of the imposition of order, and the order is necessary, especially for people who are hopeless and nihilistic. And lots of people are hopeless and nihilistic. Way more people than you think. And part of that is because no one's ever really encouraged them. Lay yourself, lay a disciplinary structure on yourself. Get the chaos in, in, in check. And then you can move towards a state that's freer. Because it's discipline first. Comes out of that as a much grander freedom. And so virtually every freedom that you have in life that's true freedom is purchased at the price of discipline. Most people half-ass half their life all the time. I knew they were gonna get tired. They were gonna flinch. They were gonna get down. They quit improving themselves. They start sleeping in, but keep getting wide. I'm gonna stay relentless. Don't give in to the fears. Don't give in to the setbacks. You're gonna have failure. It's part of the game.